Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tomorrow. There have been quite a few updates over the past couple of weeks and months for the companies that are being serious about developing commercial space stations. First, let's talk about Axiom Space, who recently announced a contract with Redwire to have them provide their rollout solar arrays for the Axiom station modules. This is something that seemed all but obvious since most of their renders looked like they had these rollout solar arrays to begin with, especially the most recent ones, but it's nice to have this confirmation that this is actually going to happen. And in fact, it makes me think of a couple of others whose renders also have these rollout solar arrays. Kind of seems to me like whoever wins the commercial space station race, it's going to be Redwire. Things are apparently progressing well in Turin, Italy at Talis Alenia, where the first module is being manufactured. And with a small change of plans in the order of modules that would be sent, they're having to do some salvaging work and deliver things in the order that Axiom wants them to be. But things are progressing well, and as of right now, Axiom is aiming for late 2027 to launch the first module that would first dock with the International Space Station before becoming a free flyer. With it being late 2025 right now, two years away just seems too far away and I'm hoping that there's something that can be done to potentially speed that up. However, things are going well with Axiom. They are continuing with their suit development, which is progressing well for not only use on the lunar surface, but potentially to take over for EVAs at low Earth orbit space stations as well. Basically to take over all of the spacesuits for NASA. Meanwhile, at the International Astronautical Congress, Axiom was able to make a couple of deals, including a memorandum of understanding with a Japanese semiconductor manufacturing company to manufacture chips in orbit that would especially be resistant to space radiation and use in space technologies, as well as things back on Earth. They also signed a memorandum of understanding with Slovakia to help their space sector, as well as help launch experiments and potentially lead to a human spaceflight someday. They also signed a similar agreement with Senegal, adding now the total number of countries that they have agreements like this with to 14. They also have various agreements with organizations within Germany and the European Space Agency as a whole, who have already sponsored astronauts to go on their private astronaut missions. Speaking of their private astronaut missions, they did a study on their mission this year, Axiom 4, looking at diabetes, monitoring diabetes, and also being able to administer treatments. And it turns out their study revealed that not only are they able to monitor diabetes effectively, they're able to administer diabetes medication with existing technology. The diabetes injection pens, the insulin pens, work in microgravity. They've already been not designed to work in microgravity, but just so happen to work properly and administer the proper amount of dosage. And yeah, that's Charlie Bolden on screen right there, who has been helping Axiom with various projects, including missions like this to study different effects. And this breakthrough is something really exciting that opens up the door to a whole bunch of people who are automatically disqualified from flying in space because of diabetes. Whether or not this study enables diabetes is another question. Hopefully that we can be looking towards cures in the future. But this is still a really cool announcement. By the way, if you're a university student or professor, Axiom is putting together an alliance that has 15 universities so far from the United States, Europe, and Australia that are working together on ways that they can send student experiments to either the International Space Station with private astronaut missions or to the Axiom Station whenever that is operational, plus a whole bunch of other opportunities as well. So if you want to get a little bit more information about that or want to join this Alliance, all you have to do is send an email to research at axiomspace.com. Could lead to something. So for Axiom, despite the manufacture and potential launch of their first module still being two years away, there is so many partnerships that they've been working on and great deals that they have been doing. These private astronaut missions to the International Space Station, their spacesuit work that they've been doing with the potential to have a lot of business with just that alone, and now several lines of business with orbital manufacturing, pharmaceutical research, and bio 
biomedical research, there are several justifications for the Axiom station, at least for a couple of years of its initial operation. As long as Axiom is wise about how they operate their business, I don't see any reason why they aren't going to be a major player for at least several years, if not for decades. Meanwhile, Vast has been making great progress on their Haven Demo spacecraft, which is a satellite that is testing all of the components that eventually will fly on their Haven 1 and possibly Haven 2 if they get a large contract. They've conducted all of the necessary tests that they need to do pre-flight, including work on their thrusters, and are in the final stages of testing and integration before being loaded on the rideshare flight on a Falcon 9 SpaceX flight, potentially in November but there's a chance it could get pushed back until December. With this spacecraft, they're testing the life support systems, the avionics, the guidance and navigation, the solar panels, batteries, and more. And they are ready at their headquarters with their new mission control center to do all of their upcoming operations with this demo spacecraft before launching their Haven 1 module next year. Vast is still aiming for hopefully summer of 2026 to launch their Haven 1 module and have the first crewed mission not long after that. But in the meantime, since September, they've completed the final weld on the actual module that is they're planning on flying flying into space. This comes after they've already done the work on their Pathfinder module, as well as their qualification test article that they've been testing in the Mojave Desert to verify its structural integrity amongst a whole bunch of other things. Those tests have been successful and they're proceeding with building the actual flight module that is going to space. And they are very proud to announce that they have completed their final weld on the actual module. And at this point, it's integrating all of the other different components and outfitting this into a real spacecraft. They're going to be sending it out to Mojave to do more tests similar to the qualification test article just to verify that everything is good with this before they proceed with installing more hardware on it. Vast has been keeping up an impressive pace and it looks like they are on track to launch their module next year. Of course, there's always delays, but things are looking really good for them. Them. In fact, I think that they have the best shot out of all of these companies, at least to be first. Meanwhile, Voyager Technologies, who's building the Star Lab module, has been making lots of progress in terms of partnerships and investments and going public on the New York Stock Exchange. And it seems like they have done yet another redesign of their space station module. It looks like minor changes for, well, minor. The layout of the solar panels and radiators have changed. It looks like there are not going to be the docking adapters that we've seen on previous versions and instead of having a common berthing mechanism and international docking adapter they're just going to go with international docking adapter and make it easier for people to to dock with them as a matter of fact northrop grumman has been testing technology on their cygnus spacecraft to upgrade that from being a berthing vehicle to a docking vehicle so Good for them. However, they did recently announce a new partner, Vivace, who is going to be manufacturing the primary structure of this. Not Airbus, even though the main module is supposed to be based on the Airbus loop. Airbus will not be manufacturing it. It'll be this other company named Vivace. And to see yet another redesign of this, I am not sure that they're going to be launching this by 2029. It feels like Voyager Technologies is leaning into a lot more of the defense and military spending. And it's likely to me that we are going to see some sort of major pivot towards military technology instead. I hope that I'm wrong because just based off of design, theirs looks to be the most advanced. And I would really like to go into more depth about Star Lab in general because it has a crazy history. There's so many companies and acquisitions that have been involved with this. And it's just a bizarre story that on the surface seems like it's got tons and tons and tons of support and money to be able to accomplish their goals. And yet I find myself having less confidence in them than before. That deserves a whole another video without making this one too long. So let's talk about that another time. Let's put a pin in that for now. In any case, it's 
great to see progress like this, and I'm very much looking forward to next year and what goals are going to be achieved. I know two years away for the first Axiom station feels like a long time, but at the same time, it's probably going to go by very quickly. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Space Mike, and until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, per aspera ad astra, through difficulty to the stars.